Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm finally jumping into Roxy's Weekly Challenge with week number six. I have been, and in, my intentions were good. I really wanted to jump into this, but I had a lot of things that I was planning and lots of stuff's been going on. But I'm jumping in today because I went thrifting and I found a really wonderful book um, uh, on English garden embroidery and I feel like it would really lend itself well to the week six project which are these document holder um, sort of envelopes. So I made one already beforehand to just kind of show you. So these are pages from an English garden embroidery book that I tore out. Um, they were double sided which was wonderful so this first one um, I've gone ahead and just completed it so that I could show you where I'm going with this so you can use all different kinds of papers documents what have you um, I've chosen in this one some coffee dyed paper I have a big basket of papers that are six by six and handmade papers so I'm gonna be putting those in there I've got some little stationary papers that were just recently gifted to me and um, so you get that pretty like backing there so lots of writing space in here um and it's just a nice little document fold i think i like the um under tuck of this style i know that um rachel mentioned in her video that she made a mistake with how she made these but i don't think i caught what the right versus wrong way was i think the challenge is that um she was having trouble keeping some of them closed and I think she wanted to fold this in and have like the flap on the outside. I'm not sure what was intended but I liked what the end product looked like so I thought I would just experiment and play with this on my own and you know we'll see what we make. So let's just get making. So I've got a bunch of these. I'm going to try to just use all of them. And then I also have one digital um, paper that I printed. This is from Weathered Textures on Etsy. And I thought I would go ahead and use it as well, maybe. Um, it is quite big, though. So I don't know. I may or may not use it. I'm kind of on the fence. Um, yeah, I may use it for collage instead. Okay, let's just move on from that that brainer. Um, so then you just have to decide like what you want on the outside. I want these bees on the outside. I think they're really cute. So I think I'm doing this a little differently than what I saw Rachel do because I know she did the whole fold first. All that I want to do is the top fold. Then after I've done the top fold, I want to select the papers that I'm going to put in this. So I'm going to choose this pretty piece of stationery. And I'm going to put about five pages in each one of these. This is some blueberry dyed paper. Um, and you know what? I'm going to turn this this way. So we get that cute flower at the bottom. It's like a little piece of Japanese stationery. And then we put this here. And we need to... Um, she was just folding them up if they were too long. But I don't know if I want to do that. I may or may not. I think I kind of just want to trim it. So um, I'm going to just trim it. that it fits inside here neatly. Oops. There we go. So now we have two pages. And that does fit right. I could probably stand to just take a little off the side, I think. This paper does not want to tear. I don't know why. Okay, there we go. Not that. And then I got this really cute Scotty dog paper from Nancy at Wishes and Weeds who gave me all this lovely stuff. I'm going to take the Scotties off though because they just, I just don't see myself being into Scotties. But I do love this uh, paper. I think it's really nice. Then I'll show you this. This is what I'd like to use um, some things from because I just have a lot of like little scrappy type paper like that. So let's grab some pieces. So this one's really cute. Apparently I took a little piece of it off for some reason. Um, this is all like handmade paper from a store that I used to live near. It's called Desserts, and for a while they used to sell these fun packages of this like really cute handmade paper that um, you know they were importing from somewhere. 
All right, so we have four pages in here now, and I need one more. Let's go with this cute little neutral that has some stitching on it. And then I'm going to bring this down, and I'm going to um, I'm going to pop an eyelet in here, um, just on the one side. I think. Um, just want to think about that. So if I put an eyelet there, yeah, that's what I want to do. Okay. So I need to make sure I've got my big eyelet hole and my big eyelet punch. I just have to flip these because I just did little eyelets. Um, you go. That way, I think. Okay. So I will pop this little hole in here. And then grab an eyelet. Sorry if you hear some snarfing sounds, that would be my little dog Toasty who's down hanging out with me. Okay, now let's fold this in here. Okay. And give everything a nice bone fold. And you can obviously like embellish these to your heart's desire on either side. I don't know if I'm going to embellish them or not because I sort of feel like on their own I just quite enjoy them because this um, particular paper is just really pretty. So I think the way I want to do this closure is with some of this fun yarn. And I'm going to slip knot it through here, like so. And then we'll go ahead and tie it around here. Um, yeah, we'll wrap that side because it's the long side. And then we'll just tie a little bow with this one. Up at the top here, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's a really easy and fun little project. Okay, let's keep going. I pretty much am in love already that we're able to make something so quick and fun. There was obviously some prep involved. I had to, you know, find everything. <laughs> and I had to tear out all these papers and collect all the papers and yeah. Let me not pretend that this was not some effort. <laughs> it was. Um, now I want to try closing one of these with brads if I can. Grab a couple brads. One and two little brads. Now we need some paper. Um, some of this yellow hand dyed paper here. Put that in there. And then just kind of get an idea of the size for this. One there, and then we'll fold up the bottom. And we'll trim it. I have no idea why I am unable to like <laughs> neatly tear. There we go. <laughs> I've lost my ability to tear paper. It's over, guys. It's over. Okay, this then. This little piece of cute stationery here. Two. I have some of this. This is cute. So let's fold that up a little. I'm going to leave that one folded. That'll be okay, I think. It won't add a ton of bulk. It'll be good. And I'm going to add another yellow piece, which I will trim because I don't want a load of papers that are all folded under there, but one is okay. It will add a little interest. So there we go. And then this little handmade paper. 
Okay, so now we've got our flap here and I need my pokey pokey tool. Hmm, right there, okay. So let's just take a look at this here. You know, there's some benefit to the fact that this is gridded paper because I can kind of use the grid to make sure I'm relatively straight. So we'll put our brad this way. One. And then here. both sides so that this lays down nicely. Okay. Oh, that's too cute. <laughs> I love these. Okay, let's keep going. That is some scrap we're not going to use because it's been cut all weird. All right. This, we'll start with this edge. Okay. How do I want to do this one? Let me grab. I'm going to do the one eyelet technique this time with a white eyelet. Then I need papers. This is cute. Will that fit in there? Yeah. I'm going to. I know this is probably going to stress you out, but I'm going to tear this off the bottom because I don't want the religious um, saying, even though I do love the rest of it. And then I can use it this way and it won't be so long. But also, I think I want to put something behind it too. Um, this. Some coffee bag paper. Okay. So let's get an idea of how wide this should be. Maybe there's good. Mm -hmm. One, two. Let's go with more of this Scotty dog. And if you love Scotty dogs and you're like, why would you take those off? I'm sorry. <laughs> I love them too. They just don't go with the overall theme of what I'm making. <laughs> so they gotta go. Okay, um, not that one. Just looking for another piece of paper that goes with this. And I think an orange would be quite cute. And that will fit perfectly. Then, uh, not that one. A little one. A little one that's just plain and simple like that. Okay, so then we want to go with the single eyelet in the middle. Put our eyelet in. And actually, I think I'm going to put it this way this time just to experiment and see what looks better because I do think it's nice to have it on the back with the fancy kind of back. Okay. Yeah, that's cute. All right, then we'll tuck these in. Yeah, so whatever Rachel was intending to do, I'm not angry that she did like the style she did because it led me to this and I, I don't know I think she did one like this but she said that some others would make it too big because she used full size like um digital pages for this I'm obviously using something a little smaller so I have a little more flexibility um with this so with this one I can slip knot it or I can just tie it through I think I'll slip knot it because I like the idea that like when you undo your yarn, it doesn't get lost. It doesn't fall out. You know, you don't lose the whole 
thing when you open this up it stays put and you can tie it right back up again and be happy and we'll tie a little bow this is hand spun yarn that i spun forever ago from a beautiful blue faced lester lamb oh memories Okay, that now, strawberries, those are pretty. Okay, we have a bunny on the back, that's cute. So, this, Stationary sheets, they're so cute. And I need to just trim a little from the top. And then I have these images, um, you know, because you can put images in here too. And I was thinking something kind of neutral that would still allow writing would be really cute. So let's use this. That there, we'll fold this up. for a bit of red paper because we have strawberries in there and that would be nice. Here's some. Would go nicely with that. Strawberry. And I think a little piece of this colorful vellum. Keep that to the side because I want to use that as well. It'll give a little crispy, crunchy sound, which is really fun. Good. Then with this one, I'm going to do brads, I think. Um, okay, so go here. I'm going to do them the other way this time so that the circle is on the back instead. And we'll go a little wider because I think we can. Yeah, we can. Maybe here. Well, let's measure. So we've got. Mm, up there. We should be down a little bit. There we go. I'm sure, you can probably hear my kids upstairs thundering around. We went out for a little bit today because I had to um to do some administrative stuff in my life, and <laughs> they fell asleep in the car. So now they are hyper ready for a weekend okay yeah that's good I'm just put that side down too all right we're just whipping through these I love this this is really fun this is like the mindless kind of well not mindless but you know relaxing kind of energy type making that I am so down for right now. 
this is um, reminding me so much of like how I'm hoping to feel like I hope I feel this way with my March mask make challenge which if you have not yet seen it um, check out my Instagram you can get the prompts there and we're gonna have a good time I think it's gonna be a lot of fun this and then let's grab these scrap -a -doo, these little scraps this is something that I often do in journals I will use like these little thin scraps and I'll layer a couple of them like this you know so that they're writing space they're fun and I have some of this copper paper that I might also put in there. So I have a real hankering to just kind of use up these sorts of things that have been hanging about. And they're beautiful, so we can't go wrong with beautiful things. Then maybe this. And one more little fancy kind of cute paper from my stash of little papers here. This, 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 yes. Oh, that's pretty. All right, so this one, what do we want to do? Brad, single Brad. No, 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 not single Brad. Eyelid, I mean, single eyelid. So, that, and Maybe a gold eyelid or a brassy eyelid. What do we have? Looks like mm, gold. And I'll do it on this side. I think I like the finished side on the outside the best. If that makes sense. And I'm trying to decide. So like what I think Rachel did was she folded this in first and then, yeah, I don't know. That's not what I'm going to do though. I don't think that's what I want for this because I like the little flip that's there that I can put the little flap there and it works good to keep them closed. And then once I bone fold, it really lays down. Yeah. I'm going to do some green paper raffia on this one. I have had this paper raffia for so long. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy to use it. This one I think I'll slip not around and stick this in here. Paper raffia is a pretty nice um, thing to use. It used to be really popular in like, you know, like it's natural color with like kind of more country type crafts. Um, this stuff I got like thrifting and I've used it on many, many gifts. Like I like using it on gifts, but I recently have been using like bits of it in the studio here and I quite like what I get to make with it. It's fun. So we'll just do, yeah, we'll just do a single bow because we want to be able to open that up again. That's fun. Okay. I probably should have set a timer like Rachel does. I'm going to be doing that for my March mask make videos because I will just keep going and going and I know myself. All right. Um, yes, let's put some of that in there. Okay. One. And they had a there was a really pretty purple on there. Yeah, I think I'll use a purple paper. One of those. 
the purple will go nicely. down a bit. Three. one large brad maybe or two yeah, let's do one large brad with this white brad all right so we're in the center here there we go we'll head on over to the back agree that these don't really require much embellishment because I just feel like I don't want to overcomplicate that cute little you know pattern it's just so cute so if you see in your thrift store um, the book is called English garden embroidery but I recommend taking a look for any um, you know em embroidery or needlework type books like the key to this one being so great is that it was double sided so like both sides had that you know great patterning on it and um, kind of enables me to just use like all this good stuff will we lose that no you won't lose the squirrel yeah good I can put the squirrel in there so I'll just trim a little bit here. Again, if you're watching this, Nancy, thank you so much for all of this paper that you gave me. I um, I feel really spoiled. It's very kind of you. And um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be putting it to good use because it's a lot of fun and I really love it. Lovely papers. I always do enjoy uh, your taste in things when I watch your thrift haul videos and just the stuff that you choose to work with. I think I can relate very much to your style. Um, okay, let's put that one at the back because it's cute, cute, cute. Okay. That, that, that. Then let's see if I can use more of this copper paper. in my like let's use it up kind of stack right now Oops. a little bit shorter maybe and you know this doesn't have to be super perfect right like we we don't have to like have extremely perfect papers um, This one, it's a fun paper. Maybe I'll use another of the Scotty Dogs papers, minus the Scotty Dogs. I'm going to be getting an email from the Scotty Dog Federation of Scotty Dog Lovers about this. When I was a kid there was a lovely supply teacher that I had from time to time and um, 
she lived down the road. Her name was Mrs. Foster, and she was a really lovely person, and she had two little black Scotty dogs. She was one of those cute people who, like, their dog kind of defines a lot of their life, and it was very cute because she, um, she had a mailbox. I'm sorry, my phone is being so annoying. Let me get it out of here. Um, I forgot, I forgot it was there. So, yeah, my, she had a mailbox that looked like a Scotty dog, and she had these two little black Scotty dogs, and she would walk them, and they would have these, I used to call them butterscotch ribbons when I was a kid, like, they were like ribbons that were like a little, like a, a Scottish, you know, plaid, um, I don't know why I called them butterscotch ribbons, but I suspect it has something to do with Macintosh toffee, which if you're Canadian, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Cause um, yeah, I'm, it's a Canadian thing, I think. Okay, let's fold this in here. There we go. And then we will bone fold and bone fold. There we go. And we'll go with the Paper raffia again. And this one, I'm just going to do like this sort of a bow up top, like that. Tighten it a little, and then it's not part of the closure. The closure is independent of the bow bow's just decorative so we can double knot it so that it doesn't come loose and then trim these it can be like a fun bow and like if you know with paper raffia you can actually like unfurl all this and make this like much wider than it really is like see you can do some fun stuff with it I'm gonna keep it smooshed though because I like it smooshed. So that's that one. Okay, so I took a minute and made a couple more of these. Not a whole lot more. Most of them I think we made together. I only made like two or three. Um, so here we go. How fun are these, right? I love these. I made this owl one off camera. And it's, um, I'll show you the papers inside because you didn't get to see them. But same kind of idea. Some fun papers. Um, these are great. I really like these. Yay! <laughs> these are going to be so cute in journals. I'm really excited to use them. And you know, like you could add, like I know uh, Rachel was adding like a, you know, like a little clustered flower or a little label or what have you, and you could do it on either side. These papers are just so pretty and so busy already that I just feel like I don't need to do anything to make them beautiful. They're already beautiful. How many did we make? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve pieces of ephemera for our journals. So I could have honestly kept going. I have a few more of these papers, um, but I decided I want to keep some of them for signatures in a journal. So that is it for me for now. Thank you for watching. You can check the description box below for the link to Rachel's channel for the, the Roxy's um, weekly challenge. Um, and I will be popping back to hopefully do week seven. I'm going to try to see if I can keep up with this um, on a weekly basis. If not, I, I will do some of them, but I'm going to try to stay with this. So thank you for hanging out with me and have a great day. Bye for now.